knee pain. Causes, treatment, and prevention with yours truly. Orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Chris Rayner. Yes, today we're talking about knee pain. What causes it, how to treat it, and what you can do to prevent it. I'll be demonstrating some important exercises at the end of this video that I think everyone should incorporate into their fitness routine in order to stay healthy, strong, and injury free. Fast forward to this time if you only wanna see the exercises. As a sports orthopedic surgeon and a knee specialist, I get a lot of patients with knee pain. It is a very common complaint that affects millions of individuals worldwide, impacting their daily lives and quality of life. From a medical perspective, knee pain can stem from a wide variety of causes, ranging from acute injuries to chronic conditions. Understanding the multifactorial nature of knee pain is crucial for an accurate diagnosis, effective treatment, and prevention strategies. Disclaimer. If you're currently experiencing knee pain, please consult a physician or rehab specialist to get a proper diagnosis and treatment plan tailored specifically to you. What I'm about to describe in this video are simply some general guidelines that I would give to my own patients. This information should only be used for educational purposes, not as diagnosis or treatment for your particular problem. With that being said, let's get into the details about knee pain. Regarding anatomy and function, the knee is a complex hinge joint formed by the femur, tibia, and the patella, supported by ligaments, tendons, cartilage, and muscles. Its primary function includes weight bearing, stability, and facilitating movements such as flexion, extension, and a little bit of rotation. Any disruption or pathology affecting these structures can lead to knee pain and dysfunction. When discussing knee pain, I will group the causes into four sections. Acute injuries, overuse injuries, degenerative conditions, and miscellaneous. So first, let's review some of the types of acute injuries. The knee is susceptible to ligamentous injuries with the anterior cruciate ligament or the ACL and the medial collateral ligament or MCL being the most commonly affected. ACL tears often result from sudden twisting or hyperextension of the knee whereas MCL injuries typically occur due to direct impact on the side of the knee or a forced valgus stress. Meniscal tears are also quite common. The menisci are fibrocartilaginous structures that act as shock absorbers within the knee joint. Tears in the menisci can arise from traumatic incidents or degenerative changes, causing pain, swelling, and mechanical symptoms such as locking or catching. I also see patellar subluxations or dislocations which result in acute pain and functional impairment. Factors contributing to patellar instability include anatomical variations, muscular imbalances, and traumatic events. Women and athletes who are quad dominant tend to be more susceptible to patellar dislocations. It is critical for everyone to make sure that the hamstrings, glutes, and VMO muscles are well developed and the entire lower body is well balanced to help prevent any of the above listed injuries. Now let's move on to overuse injuries. Patellar tendinopathy or jumper's knee is caused by repetitive activities that include surprise, jumping, or running that leads to overloading of the patellar tendon, resulting in tendinopathy and localized pain at the inferior pole of the patella, or the bottom of the kneecap. Iliotibial band syndrome, or ITBS, is characterized by inflammation and friction of the iliotibial band as it rubs against the lateral femoral condyle, or even the greater trochanter, during repetitive knee flexion and extension. Runners and cyclists are particularly prone to developing ITBS due to repetitive leg movements. Patellofemoral pain syndrome, or PFPS, also known as runner's knee, encompasses a spectrum of anterior knee pain associated with activities such as running, squatting, stair climbing, and even prolonged sitting. It is often attributed to malalignment of the patella within the trochlear groove, muscular imbalances, or cartilage abnormalities. As I mentioned above, it's important to use a variety of exercises to balance out all the muscles of the body. The remedy for overuse injuries in general is to do a variety of physical activities. For competitive and pro athletes, injury can often be the price you pay for hyper-focusing on specific types of physical activity and or training. So now let's talk about degenerative conditions. Osteoarthritis, or OA, is a progressive degenerative joint disease characterized by the breakdown of articular cartilage accompanied by osteophyte formation, synovial inflammation, and joint stiffness. Knee OA commonly affects older individuals but can also result from previous trauma, obesity, or genetic predisposition. 
Rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, is an autoimmune condition characterized by chronic inflammation of the synovial membrane, leading to joint destruction and deformity. While RA primarily affects small joints, it can also involve the knees, causing pain, swelling, and functional impairment. For people with arthritis of the knee, is it important to keep moving? The answer is definitely yes. Although your arthritis might cause some discomfort, studies provide evidence that people who have arthritis that exercise and move regularly have better outcomes and less pain than those with arthritis who do neither of those things. And the body is very frugal when it comes to energy. If you do not use something, you will lose it. So the quickest way to stiffness and difficulty moving is by being sedentary and not moving regularly. Chondromalacia patella refers to the softening and degeneration of the articular cartilage on the posterior aspect of the patella, resulting in anterior knee pain exacerbated by activities that increase patellofemoral compression forces. This is typically caused by weakness in some of the muscles on the front of the thigh, leading to patellar maltracking or abnormal pressures on the cartilage on the back of the patella. Finally, here are some of the miscellaneous causes of knee pain. Bursitis, which is an inflammation of the bursae around the knee joint, can occur due to repetitive kneeling, direct trauma, or underlying inflammatory conditions. Fractures of the knee can involve the patella, distal femur, or proximal tibia and result in severe pain, swelling, and instability, requiring a trip to the emergency room with prompt evaluation and management to prevent long-term complications. Infections of the knee can also occur. Examples are septic arthritis of the knee or osteomyelitis of the distal femur or proximal tibia that result from direct seeding of bacteria into the joint by trauma or surgery, or seeding by bacteria carried in the bloodstream, both necessitating urgent medical intervention to prevent joint destruction and systemic complications. This can be extremely serious. The most common reason for knee pain that I see in the clinic is for chondromalacia. It is usually not the result of an injury or trauma, and it is generally responsive to non-operative treatments with exercise. That covered, when should you see a doctor? My general advice is to seek medical attention if you have pain or swelling that does not respond to physical therapy and controlled articular movement exercises, or pain that is associated with worsening, fever, chills, nausea, or vomiting, or pain that is associated with progressive firm swelling of the calf or shortness of breath, or pain that is associated with an inability to weight bear on the affected leg, or pain that is associated with an inability to fully straighten the leg, or in other words, a locked knee. Treating knee pain effectively depends on the underlying cause, severity, and individual circumstances of the patient. In the case of an acute injury to the knee, Ideal non-operative treatment is guided by the peace and love mnemonic. Here's a comprehensive list of some of the best ways to treat knee pain. Protect the knee by unloading or restricting movement for one to three days to minimize bleeding, prevent distension of injured fibers, and reduce the risk of aggravating the injury. Rest should be minimized as prolonged rest can compromise tissue strength and quality. Pain signals should guide the cessation of protection. Elevate the limb higher than the heart to promote interstitial fluid flow out of tissues. Although not really supported by evidence, it does provide some benefit with low risk of complications. Avoid taking anti-inflammatory medications acutely as this will reduce tissue healing. Try to avoid the use of ice as well during this time. Instead, use compression to reduce swelling. Avoid unnecessary passive modalities or unwarranted investigations. Give your body an opportunity to address the injury naturally. Use pain as a guide as to when loading of the injured extremity is acceptable. Increase load gradually as pain symptoms allow. Have an optimistic outlook on your recovery and expect that your body will take care of the problem as it knows how to do. Perform pain-free cardio exercises or activities to increase peripheral blood flow to repairing tissues. Engage in active progressive exercises for rehabilitation to restore strength, mobility, and proprioception. Use of over-the-counter medications such as ibuprofen or naproxen can help alleviate pain and reduce inflammation, but use these sparingly for the reasons mentioned above. Acetaminophen may also be used for pain relief and does not negatively affect healing. 
Doing specific weakness-based exercises to help strengthen the muscles around the knee, improve flexibility, and correct biomechanical imbalances is, is key. Modalities such as ultrasound or electrical stimulation may be included, but should never, ever be the focus. Injection of corticosteroids directly into the knee joint can provide significant pain relief and reduce inflammation, particularly for conditions like osteoarthritis or bursitis, but should only be used sparingly as a last resort. In cases where conservative treatments fail to provide adequate relief, surgical interventions such as arthroscopic surgery, partial or total knee replacement, or ligament reconstruction may be considered, depending on the specific diagnosis and the severity of the condition. For individuals who are overweight or obese, weight reduction can help alleviate stress on the knee joint, take away pain, and improve overall function. It's essential for individuals experiencing knee pain to consult with a healthcare professional, preferably an orthopedic specialist or a physical therapist, to receive a comprehensive evaluation and personalized treatment plan tailored to their specific needs and circumstances. A combination of conservative treatments, lifestyle modifications, and in some cases, surgical interventions can effectively alleviate knee pain and improve functional outcomes, allowing individuals to regain mobility and enjoy an active lifestyle. I'll now take a moment to demonstrate a few exercises that I think everyone should be doing in order to prevent knee pain and that I give to my patients in a progressive manner as part of their recovery process. Balancing on one knee. This is exactly as it sounds. Stand on one leg and balance, trying to keep the working knee tracking over the outside edge of your foot. To make this harder, bend your leg more and sink down lower. To make it easier, try holding onto a railing or the wall for balance. Try to hold this position for at least 60 seconds. Shrimp squat to a target. Similar to the balancing on one knee, now you're going to purposely bend your leg to touch your knee to a target. You can use a stair, a bench, yoga block, or even a thick book. Always track the working knee out over the outside edge of your foot and going through reps of five to 10 for a few sets per side. Pick a height for your object that you can touch down to very gently, making sure your movement there is intentional and controlled. Reverse Nordic or natural knee extension. Starting from a kneeling position, keep your body straight and squeeze your glutes as you lean back. You can either do this and hold the position for time or work through reps of three to five for a few sets. Only go back far enough that you can keep your body in a straight line. If you find this challenging, hold on to something for a little bit of support. Assisted sissy squat. Start standing and using the support of a post. Go up on your toes and drive your knees forward as you try to lower yourself to the ground. The goal is to keep bending your knees until they touch the ground in front of you, then stand and do it again. This is extremely difficult and must be done under complete control. You can, however, work negatives holding onto something, but remember to always come to the ground softly. You could do one to three reps for a few sets. Squat hold. Come down into your lowest squat while still keeping things active. This means not simply slumping down to the bottom and collapsing, but going to a point where you can easily push back up to a standing position. This can be made easier by holding onto a stair post to keep the chest upright. Your chest should stay tall and the knees should be driving out over your feet as mentioned earlier. I would do this a few times every day just while you're working or hanging out around the house. Elevated split squats. Using a staircase or a low bench, put one leg in front, keeping the other behind and getting into a long lunge position. The goal here is to drive the front knee as far over your foot as possible, bringing your hamstring to your calf if you can. Work through reps of five to 10. You're trying to take that knee through its full range of motion and work to gain strength there. Pistol squat negatives. Standing on one foot, you can use a post for balance here too. Put the free leg out in front and try to sit down slowly. This is like a shoot the duck move where you ideally would sit with the free leg coming in front of you and not touching the ground at all. But work to your ability, so either only go part of the way down for repetitions, maybe five to 10, or sit as far down as possible and hold there for time. If you can get to the floor, make sure you sit under complete control. You can stand up however works for you. The ultimate goal here is to get into the lowest position without actually touching the ground and then coming back up for reps. If you've had knee surgery or are recovering from a knee injury, please watch my video on swelling in the knee. It is critical for optimal function to regain full knee extension after injury or surgery, the details of which are not always completely understood or gained by patients, even those who are going to physiotherapy. 
I think I've covered most everything regarding knee pain. Pass this video along to someone who may be experiencing this problem. Check out my Dr. Chris playlist right here on this channel for other videos like this one where I talk about orthopedic problems and how to prevent and fix them. As always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris. Thanks for watching.